What's up guys? Welcome to the channel and welcome to my garage. And in today's video, we have something fun in store. Oh yeah, we're actually gonna fix something. I suspect a bad fuel pump in my 2003 Suzuki Hayabusa. She has long cranks at startup and she's running out of horsepower at around 9,500 RPM. Now, my bike redlines at 11,500 RPM. She should be pulling pretty hard close to that number. It is November in Buffalo and we already have three feet of snow, so a test ride is not happening. Instead, we're gonna take a diagnostic approach. I got my hands on a fuel pressure gauge and we're gonna take a before reading and an after reading. Factory spec says it should be 43 PSI in the lines. So I hope to see a little less than that to start. If not, I'm still gonna follow through and replace that pump. Okay, so why fuel pump? Well, some key symptoms to fuel pump failure are cranking with no start, long cranks, loss of power or surging power, and even a noisy pump. I'm getting a few of those symptoms. I'm getting long cranks, I'm getting a loss of horsepower, in my case in the high RPM range, and the pump is a little noisy. It's my first fuel injected bike, so I'm not sure what exactly normal sounds like. We'll take a before and after reading, see what it sounds like, and go from there. Before I went and blamed the fuel pump, I ruled a few things out. I spent a lot of time going through this bike and correcting mistakes made by the previous owner for a solid baseline. I also knew I was getting spark, but decided to check the ignition system anyway, and everything looked pretty good. I tested a handful of sensors, including the throttle position sensor. I'll include a link for that one in the description below. So we ruled out spark. We ruled out bad sensor readings. Really what's left is fuel delivery. Let's get to work. To test the pressure, we're going to need to take the seat off and pop the tank up. Before we tear into it though, let's see what that pump sounds like. We'll compare that to the new pump at the end of the video, see if it sounds any quieter. And for now, let's test that pump. I've got the tank up and we have access to the lines. It's time to hook up our gauge. I brought a special gauge home from work. This is a flow through type gauge as opposed to a dead end type gauge. A dead end type gauge would be like your tire pressure gauge. Pressure only goes in one direction and it dead ends at the gauge. This is a special gauge that will actually allow us to run the bike. We can test active pressure while the bike is running. Fuel injectors act like a pressure relief valve. The more throttle you give, the longer those injectors stay open, the more fuel flows through, the more relief in the fuel pressure in the line. So we we'll get to test it at idle, we get to test it with some throttle. I anticipate some low readings, hopefully below 43 pounds. Let's see what we get. To connect the fuel pump, we're going to disconnect the fuel line from the fuel rail. If you take a look under here, this is our fuel line. And this is our fuel rail. To disconnect it, I like to push forward on the line. And while you're pushing forward, you're going to squeeze these gray tabs here. When you squeeze the gray tabs, you can then release the line and push the line off while keeping the gray tabs or whatever color tabs you have on the rail. Fuel is going to leak out of that. Whatever fuel is left in the line is going to leak out of that. So I threw some rags down there to soak that up. I recommend you guys do the same. I disconnected the line. Here is that gray tab. I took that off the rail so I don't lose it. We're going to plug one end of the gauge into the fuel line and the other end of the gauge into the rail. This is about what it's going to look like when you have it connected. This is your fuel line from the pump here going into the gauge line which loops around and then into the fuel rail. And the gauge is teed into that. I've got the pressure gauge hooked up now. We're gonna do three tests. We're gonna test the pressure with the bike off. We're gonna test the pressure with the bike running. Then we're gonna test the pressure when I give it a little bit of throttle. Let's see what we get. All right, we're right at 43 PSI, which is what the book says we wanna read. 
Now let's fire the bike up, see what it reads at idle, and then we'll also give it a little bit of throttle, see if we see any deep blips in the pressure. <laughs> All right, so we're at 43 PSI at idle. Let's give it a little throttle and see what happens. Well, it looks like we got some proper readings. I'm still going to replace the pump like I told you I would, and frankly, I'm not that concerned. There's about 20 years on this fuel pump, and there's a big difference between giving an engine throttle when it's in neutral and giving an engine throttle when it's under load. When an engine's under load, it's going to demand a lot more fuel. It's the fuel pump's job to maintain pressure while providing enough flow. Now, the next step is going to be to take the tank off. To do that, we're going to disconnect the electrical connector to the pump. We're going to disconnect the gauge and the lines. And then there's a couple bolts here on the back of the tank that bolt it down to the frame. I got the tank off and I wanted to take a minute to talk about parts. I did a bit of research and it looks like an OEM fuel pump only comes as a whole assembly and it's well over 900 bucks. There's a lot of cheap options out there. There's plenty of no name pumps on eBay and a little bit more looking and I stumbled on quantum fuel systems. They offer a replacement kit for the Gen 1, Gen 2, Busa, and tons of other uh, machines, not just motorcycles, but all sorts of power sports. And they claim to have better polymers and plastics and motors, stuff that's going to last longer, provide more consistent fuel. I went ahead and bought the kit with a seal, some strainers, and the uh, fuel pressure regulator. We're going to replace all that. Um, really, I want you got to do the seal to know, make sure that you're going to have a good seal. You want to replace that regulator because it is a somewhat mechanical part. Uh, mechanical parts are parts that fail. So while I'm in there, I figured I had to spend the extra 30 bucks and replace that regulator for peace of mind. So we're going to grab a five millimeter Allen and we're going to take off these five bolts here and then we'll extract the pump. Extract the assembly, you're going to want to wiggle it and see how the fuel float level center is in there. You're going to kind of want to manipulate it and twist it out so you don't bend that center. There it is. All right, now that we got the pump out, we're gonna remove the fuel level sender, which is this assembly right here. There are three wires that bolt down to the base that goes through the other side. You gotta keep track of which wire goes where, and we're gonna take those nuts off. Then we have a couple screws here, 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 and here. Okay, now we got all the screws off. There were the two on top that hold the sender. There was one that holds a tab here. And there was one that holds a tab and another wire right here. You just got to remember to relocate that wire at the end. We should be able to slide the pump out. Might take some convincing. I'm going to pry gently with a screwdriver to do a little more convincing. 
We're going to remove the strainer by releasing these plastic clips that hold it in. That'll allow us to slide the pump out. While I'm at it, I'm also going to remove this plastic clip brace thing here that holds the fuel pressure regulator. Same idea, you just kind of pry up on these clips and it should pop right off. So my pump came with some extra wires. It's probably for another year in the model, the generation one lineup. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reuse the original wires because they route where I need them to route. Um, you can remove, there's a plastic cap that covers the nuts that holds these wires on. I'm going to finesse that cap off, take those wires off. I'm going to note where the wires go. The short one's going to go on the right side when I'm looking at it from the back, and the long one's going to go on the left side when I'm looking at it from the back. Also. We need to reuse, there's a little plastic clip here. We're gonna to need to re get that off and reuse it. The pump came also with a seal grommet that seals the pump to the filter. I'm gonna make sure to pry that out, get this grommet in there. Also, these fuel filters are known for getting filled up with junk. Luckily, my bike is relatively low miles for its age, so I'm hoping it's not too dirty in there. I have seen hacks that'll bypass the fuel filter completely and guys will install an inline filter. I prefer not to have an inline filter. It's another spot for a leak and um, the factory filter, assuming there's low miles on it, should be pretty good. I am going to take a few minutes to rinse it out really good with some solvent so that way I get as much of the, the garbage out of there as I can. I'm going to backflow spray it also. Um, the pump pumps it into the filter this way, and it comes out of the filter where the pressure re uh, regulator goes. And I'm going to spray in where the pressure regulator goes. That way, when the dirt gets on the filter, you're back flushing it off the filter. All right, so I flushed out the filter pretty good. I back flushed it with solvent. I took some time really shaking it out, rocking it back and forth. Rocking it, rocking it, rocking it, shaking it, not getting anything else out of it. Um, there's definitely still going to be some solvent in there. I used brake clean. Don't knock me for it, but it's flammable. It should flush through and burn up. Um, and uh, people say that you can blow out the filter to get all solvent out of there and everything like that. I prefer not to do that. I don't want to blow through the filter with the pressurized air. So I'm not going to do that. I also replaced the seal already. Um, always replace the seal when you take the pump out. It, if you look at the old one, especially if it's really old, it looks flat. It doesn't look round anymore. It loses its elasticity. So you want to replace that, that seal as well. Uh, I'm going to put everything back together. Hopefully I remember where everything goes. And we're going to replace the parts with new parts as we go. And just like that, the pump is ready to be put back into the tank. Now the tank's ready to go back in.
that gauge she's reading 50 psi so it's a little more pressure than it was before all right let's get a listen in on that new fuel pump All right, I got the pump installed and tested and I'm pretty pleased with the results. To start, the bike was running at about 43 to 46 PSI in the line. Now we're running at about 50 PSI in the line and it stays pretty steady too. There's still a little blip when you give it throttle, but that's gonna be normal. Now, we also noticed that my new pump's quite a bit quieter than my old pump, which is a good sign that the old pump really was going. Even though I don't have a chance to test it for a few months, I'm pretty confident this did the trick. I'll give you guys the official results when I get a chance to test it, and you can count on me bringing you guys along. I'll include a link for that in the description, or maybe I'll toss it up here in the corner, but you guys can check that one out as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys liked this and found it interesting. If you liked the video, smash that like button. If you want more content, make sure you subscribe because I got a lot more stuff coming down the line. Thanks a lot, guys.